people still dare to spread false information, like even the monk talking nonsense, denying all the Buddhas and all that. Yeah, and uh, Trang Tam affect my will. I never had any will for anybody. Just my poem. I made it for my ex fiance a long time ago, many, many decades ago. And if you read my poem, or even got one of my poem books before, you would have read it and understood that it has nothing to do with him. I wrote the poem because we broke up. You know, I had a fiancé before my ex-husband. So we broke up at the end, and that's how I wrote that poem. It's not broken, like, if I die tomorrow, I leave this and that inheritance to you. Actually, I had nothing much. Yes, it's just a poem. Like I feel empty, and my life is empty and heartbroken, and that is for him. I was, of course, heartbroken, but then I was busy, yeah, and he got on with his life. I got on with mine. Later, I met my uh, second fiancé, the doctor that I was married to. You know him. He has a photograph and all that for you to see. He's not older than me, like one monk lying about it. The monk, Thet Minh Tan. He said, my husband was very old, and he brought me to Germany from Vietnam. It's not true at all. He knows nothing, or maybe he deliberately say that, like, I'm just worthy enough to get an old man. Cô Thanh Hải đi qua, cô, cô Thanh Hải là một, một, một nữ, coi như y tá, yeah. đó, rồi chữa trị trong một cái, cái, ở Việt Nam đó thì gặp thằng Đức, Đức nó già rồi, cô Thanh Hải lấy nó, rồi nó đem qua Đức. No, it's not true. He's only one year older than me. And the, the poem I made was for uh, the first fiancé. I can't tell you his whole name, but I can say his name is Jochen K. Yeah, Jochen K is K like king, but I don't want to tell the whole name. So now you know. It has nothing to do with Trang Tam. And if you read the poem, you know that. The original English version has no words. Trang Tam mean it even. Trang Tam in there just means I leave the world and my heart feels no regret, that's all. And can you imagine such a low life using somebody's sorrowful poem to make it into a will for himself? A will, my will. My God, I didn't die yet. And a successor only comes when somebody retires or dies. I was working. For you, still, all this time, I never retired. And if I had such a so-called good successor, good enough to be my successor, I would be so happy, so proud to tell the whole world, why didn't I tell anything? And none of my disciples know, except a group of persons somewhere in Vietnam who are so vulnerable and naive enough to believe the two words in that poem. Uh, for him, no, my God. Such a devil person, how would I even write a poem for him, huh? And this Yu uh, Tang Thích Minh Tan doesn't just lie about uh, my married husband. He lies about so many things. But that is difficult, you know. I normally don't know him. It's the first time I know about him and his talk some months ago. But I just brushed by it because I thought, oh, it's another garbage. It's another gossiping, another slandering. I let the hell devils deal with this type. But by the way, we were talking about it. So in case you're confused, I think I have an obligation to explain to you. I didn't read. This whole interview with this uh, beautiful Vietnamese uh, hostess somewhere. But then uh, uh, one of your team members sent me the whole thing. So I think I feel obliged to explain all this to you in case you are confused about what he was saying. Contradictory to what you heard from me. What you hear from me is 100% true always. Because I am practicing the truth. I have to tell the truth. Because if you practice the truth and you talk falsely, <laughs> then you never reach the truth. Just like if you want to reach the South and you keep 
talking about north and fix yourself in the north direction, then you would never reach the south. Very simple as that. But the lying is a normal practice of Maya subordinates, or Maya workers. That's what they do. They don't have a moral standard. They don't have principles to follow. They even claim to follow Buddha and follow the truth and receive the precept to tell the truth, for example, one of, but they never practice it. They say anything just to make themselves famous. Yeah, you can be famous, but not in Buddha's land. All the Buddhas see you and know what you're saying. So you can tell if a monk is a real Buddhist monk or if he is a Maya monk, meaning fake monk, zealous monk, not real monk, yes, because they are very fighty. They pick on everybody, whomever they can. They tell all kinds of lies in order to attract attention to themselves. They will take advantage of other people's maybe goodness or richness or even television. You know, they invite themselves in. They make themselves attractive by lying to make sensational stories similar to some of the news that people want other people to pay attention to. They would make sensational kinds of titles or tell not true stories or kind of twist the story in a false direction. Not there. I don't remember ever being there. He was not there. Otherwise, I would ask him to explain all this falsehood about me. I have done nothing wrong to him. I have never said one word wrong about him. I didn't know of him personally up till some months ago, maybe March or something like that. Maybe half a year ago, more or less like that. Time passed so quick and I'm too busy, you know. So I just uh, happened to flip my no SIM card telephone, as I told you before, that's how I knew some news. Things just rolled out in front of my eyes. That's how I met this man on the internet. <laughs> I didn't read it. Somebody sent me information all about this talk. I didn't read the whole talk. I was so bored. But now that they sent me information, the full uh, speech from him, I think I'm obliged to clarify it. Otherwise, some of you might be misinformed because he's just slandering me, not even subtly. He was hypocritical. He was kind of bowing to me in the video, but he's slandering me through and through. That's why I think my disciples call the police just to ask him to go out. We are practitioners. We don't really take people to court. So we ask the police to take him out, maybe. That's what they did, but I don't remember anything about this. I knew nothing about this poem and the police stuff. None of my so-called disciples ever informed me about him, about the poem, about the police, nothing. I knew it only more or less half a year ago. That is the truth. All the Buddhas are my witnesses. There's many other lies that he told. The wind, just to slander me, just to degrade people like me. You don't have to degrade people to rise up above. That will backfire because if you tell lies about some innocent and good people, later on your followers might happen to find out and then your own reputation will be in ruin. Yes, that's what it is. If I was not a practitioner, a spiritual truth seeker, I would have sued him myself. But I forgive him. May all the Buddhas forgive him. This uh, zealous uh, ghost, he is a zealous ghost, not just looking like and wearing this zealous ghost type of monk robe that the Buddha has explained about short and instructed us how to recognize, but he is really one. I saw it. I have checked it out lately, and I know he's a zealous ghost. Normally, I don't care about that, but I think might as well explain it all to you. There's another lie 
a lot of lies he told in here. <laughs> Everything he told is a lie except my name, Touching Hai. Like he say, I was almost like a nurse in the hospital in Vietnam. And then I met my husband, a German husband, the old, very old German husband. <laughs> oh, he's handsome and young with blonde hair and blue eyes and a beautiful personality. So gentle, gentle. I don't know if I could meet anyone who is so attractive and so gentle, so generous and so kind, so loving, so passionate. A man like that. I counted myself lucky and unlucky to have left him to go searching for Buddhahood. But I met him in Germany when I was working for the Caritas in Allah. I met him after when I was uh, working there for the Vietnamese refugees. Some people know about that also. One of my colleagues also knows about that. It's, it's nothing uh, secret. My first Kui uh, Mang, Thay Thích Như Điện, and Sư Cô Yêu Ân, and Thích Thiện Hoa, Minh Tâm. I forgot some of the names. They all know about that. Many of the monks and nuns came to our house, my husband and my house. Sometimes they overnighted and I cooked food for them and all that. So it's no secret that I married him in Germany and met him in Germany. So he lied about that. Okay? He tried to really pin me down. Not even subtly, but obviously, with many other things he said afterward, like slandering me, all kinds of things, with physical attack even, physically attacked me, not by slapping, but by words. And that is not a gentleman. If you are a monk, for example, and you see an ugly person, unsightly person, you would never say to him or her, you are so ugly, uh, you are handicapped, or something like that. That is not compassionate. It's not a gentleman. So he's not good anyway. It's typical of Maya workers. They have no compassion, no love, no morals, no sympathy, nothing. Everything he said is a lie. Except he said that I qui with uh, my master, Thet Ding. He knows my husband. We both went together to the temple. And we both went together to see monks and nuns also. And monks and nuns came to my house also. Many more monks, I can't remember the names. The abbot of the temple in Paris, for example, I Chua Khan An. My first teacher, Thet Ding, also even went to New York to find me. And the abbot of Khan An Pagoda in Paris went to Taiwan to find me when I was at the ceremony for becoming a bishuni, a full nun. So they all loved me very much. I was very loved, very famous, and I was voted as a, a vice president of the Vietnamese Buddhists and students in Germany by my own masters and my colleagues, other Buddhist believers. And uh, he said that uh, I went to Taiwan to find Thich Tinh Han. I went there to receive the four nun Bishuni precepts. And they introduced me to Master Thich Tinh Han. I wrote about him also in a vineyard a magazine of the master I wrote about him. I wrote very nicely about him and say that I live there. The Taiwanese Buddhist Sangha introduced me to Thet Han because he was a Vietnamese monk there. So they brought me to his temple so I could stay there. And he said that Thet Han didn't receive me. That is not true. My name, Ching Hai or Tan Hai, is given from Thetan Han's master lineage. So my uh, other master gave me the name Thetan Wing, and then this master Thetan Han gave me the name. 
Thích Thanh Hải, but it all falls together, you see. Even all the prophecies mention my name. It had to be that name. I had to be in Taiwan. I had to be with Mr. Thích Thanh Hải to get that name. I knew nothing about all that before, of course. So there's another lie. And after Thích Thanh Hải, I met Master Sheng Yan, and I went with him to continue study. In his temple in New York, yes, he invited me. Actually, I just met him two times. One time he was in t e t e n h a n s temple, another time in his temple, and then he invited me to go with him to New York if I would like to. He would do paperwork for me to go, so I went there. But later I could not stay long because of visa. The Americans did not give me a visa to continue further. So I stayed there, uh, I think one year only, and the visa was not renewed, so I had to go back to Taiwan. Hmm. And before that, I study in different temples and different religions, even Tibetan and Hinduism, Sikhism, and a little Jainism as well. Yeah, but I never study magic, and he even say I study bad magic. <laughs> This is a lie. He's a liar. Even if it's not a lie, he should know that if you want to talk about somebody, bad or good, about that person, you should know that person through and through, her or his life and history. But whatever he told here, except I was in Taiwan with Thich Thanh Hanh and in Germany with Thich Nhat Hanh, is all fake, all false. He made it all up. Just to slander me, I never study magic. I do have magic within myself. Later, I discover that, but I'm not allowed to use it. And in my group, in our association, I have not allowed anybody to use magic, except once or twice we just talk about it. That's all. But nobody is supposed to use magic in our association, in our religious belief. You can ask any of my disciples, and they will tell you. Any of them, just pick any of them. And he attacked my physical also. That is something I told you already. It's not monk stuff. It's not compassionate. It's not gentlemanly. Đạo sức nó quyền thuật thành thông không? huyền thuật nó nó học, học nó học về coi như tà thuật á về yeah. huyền thuật đó nó học mà cô thanh hải học tới nỗi méo miệng luôn méo miệng so you can see that he is not real monk and in his poetry he just talks like he's very loving and kind but he slander me through and through I don't want to talk about it normally I don't even read all that but they sent me it afterward So I read it just kind of now, you know. I mean, some days ago, not even six months ago or two, three months ago. He knows nothing about Buddhism. He just learned by heart many of the Buddha's names to impress the vulnerable, the people who had not had enough time to study the sutras. And he said that I went to the. Uh, Maybe heretic way, and he went to Buddhism, but he knows not much about Buddhism at all. The basic is that you don't attack other people who done nothing wrong to you or to anybody at all, and you know nothing about what that person is teaching others or how they influence others. All I do is teach people at least the five principal precepts. Yeah, you don't tell lies. You don't. Still, you don't commit illicit sex. You don't take drugs, alcohol, and gamble, and all that. And you don't kill and harm other people. Ahimsa, non-violence. There's nothing wrong with that, and that's not the magic. We don't use magic in our group. It's forbidden for me also. I use only once for my dog person to heal my dog person because all the medicine didn't help him, and he was dying. He couldn't walk even, <coughs> and I couldn't carry him out to p o o p e because I'm too small. He was as big as me, you know that dog person, my loving good love, who is still protecting me nowadays. If I want to use my magical power, 
this monk would be dead or something wrong would have happened to him. I could not, I would not, and you know that. Everybody can recite Namo Amida Buddha, Namo Sikamoni Buddha, whatever. I told everyone that they can study meditation with me while they stay with their religion. In fact, actually, <laughs> I just told you that, and I told you that many times already. Before, in fact, I taught people to recite their religious founder's name of Buddhas or saints' names. I did not ask people to recite Namo Tanai Evo Tung Shu. That is also a lie. He said, I forced my disciples to recite that name, to recite my name, Namo Tanai Evo Tung Shu. I never did. Never. Cô Thanh Hải đi theo đường tà, nói thẳng luôn là sư đi theo Phật giáo. Đó, mỗi người có một đường đi, nhưng mà sư rất là thương cô Thanh Hải. Cô Thanh Hải rất là có, có cũng có tài, vậy đó. Nhưng mà đi lầm đường lạc lối, tự xưng. Thay vì niệm Nam Mô A Di Đà Phật, Nam Mô Bổn Sư Thích Ca Mâu Ni Phật, Nam Mô Quán Thế Âm Bồ Tát, đó, bắt đệ tử là phải niệm Nam Mô Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư. Nghĩa là coi không có ông sư nào trên đời này mà bằng bả hết, bả là Vô Thượng là Phật đấy. Đó, tự xưng mình là Phật, Nam Mô Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư. My so-called disciples, ask when they have trouble during meditation what to do. I say, in that case, just call me. I will come and help you out. That's it. Call my name. I'm near. That's all. And some people did that before, and they say, it helps. So I say, I'll continue. And then they write this kind of Namo Ching Hai Wu Shang Shi in Chinese in Taiwan and put it on their cars and run all over Taiwan. And that makes people outside recite my name also who are not vegan who don't take the five precepts not pure enough and they recite my name to ask for uh, maybe some mundane uh, favors it gives me a lot of karma so i even beg my disciples please stop that don't put that uh, slogan on your car or tell people that anymore. They have to help themselves. They have to be pure first. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It just bugs me a lot only. Everybody calls me and you're not pure enough, then it's of course making trouble for me. Uh, but I am a Buddha. That is not a lie, okay? I'm not only a Buddha, but I'm something else that I don't want to tell you yet. I'm also that the whole universe knows. If you don't believe me, you go up, ask the Buddha, ask the angels, ask the saints and sages, the Buddha Sattvas, whoever you know. They will tell you that I am the Buddha. I am Matriya Buddha and I am the Dhamma Will Turning King. I need all that in order to take care of our world right now. No one else can do it at the moment. And that's the truth I'm telling you. Believe it or not, I have to tell you the truth because it's concerning here. I am not proud to be a Buddha or anything. I keep running from danger and bad people, bad guys like this uh, Tetman Tan here. He knows nothing about anyone. He doesn't study much. He just talks a lot. Just a big mouth, just to attract attention. And many people believe that, of course, because he's a monk, so-called monk. What kind of monk wears such a colorful kasha? What for? A Buddha never wear like that. Huh? I know all the good monks who wear like that. Some other monks are maybe not yet very enlightened, but they don't wear this kind of multicolored Kashok, you know, just to attract attention to themselves. You are not a theatrical actor or actress. You don't need all this color. For what? Huh? Unless you really love it very much. All kinds of colors. And that is a lot of work for the tailor. They have to cut different colors from all different kinds of cloths. And it takes a lot of time for them to make it, and it damages many of the big, uh, beautiful cloths at the same time, because from each cloth you have to cut just one little piece like that. Then it ruins a lot of cloths. 
this is a waste of cloth, you know? This is useless to do that. I don't see any point in that. <coughs> I'm not proud to say that I'm a Buddha, you know? I am a Buddha. And if you repent and return to your original nature, purity and compassion, being a vegan, just repent to God Almighty, to all the Buddhas, to all the Master Bodhisattvas, then I will forgive you. In the name of God, in the name of all the Buddhas, I have the power to save your soul, to rescue you from hell. And that is the truth. If this is a lie, all the Buddhas will strike me dead. I will never become one piece again. I am not a self-proclaimed Buddha. I am a Buddha, okay? Yes. Originally, I didn't want to say that even. But God and all the Buddhas told me I have to, at this time of our world emergency, I have never self-proclaimed my name, Ching Hai, I was given that name from uh, Master Thet Tan Han yeah, in Taiwan. And after that, he sent me to take the precepts of Bichuni. And then I continued to stay with him in that temple until Master Sheng Yen, Tan Yim, Thet Tan Yim, invited me to go to New York. And everybody knows that. Master Thet Tan Han, also all the disciples, all the monks and nuns know this story. I can't just give that name myself. I didn't even know I needed to have another name. I have another name, Ting Wing, already from the New Year, my first master. Okay? So he told all these lies. All these lies just to make me look small because he feels so frightened of my fame and the love that people offered to me everywhere I go and the love for my so-called disciples. That's why he's so scared. He has to go up on the stage even <laughs> to slander me outright like that. And he came to bother this uh, beautiful host of this uh, beautiful channel, which I first knew six months ago, more or less just to waste her time, to waste viewers' time, just to listen to him scolding me, slandering me. But what have I done to anybody? Huh? Have I taught people to steal, to kill, to do any bad deeds? Huh? No. I taught all the good things that you have to be filial to your parents. You have to be honest. You have to go earn your living. And I earn my own living even to help the poor people. I can't think of anything else. And if he proclaims that he was my close friend before, I honestly <laughs> swear to God, I don't remember him at all. I never knew a friend like that. In fact, I didn't have a close friend ever. Not a close man friend like that. I don't know him. He must be so deadly jealous of me that he became so hateful in his heart that he could not control himself as a monk saying all these lies to degrade me so that he rises up or whatever. He's too jealous because I've been maybe so much loved by people and my disciples. Maybe so. I never teach anything wrong in all my lectures, all these decades. But okay, I don't hate him. I wish that he will one day understand things and have a better evolution. Thoát thai của con quỷ á, để làm người đó, là làm thánh á, must repent, must repent first, and you turn. And he has to cut off his... Uh, Tham Sang Si, yeah? and jealousy. Jealousy is also Tham Sang Si, yeah. Greed, anger. This is not just anger, it's truly violence. And then non-virtues for a monk especially. I advise him to return to a more a simple, compassionate life, not running after fame and fortune too much. Otherwise, time is so fast passing by and he's old already. He should better take care of his next life. Or hell will teach him and it's very painful. 
He should be teaching himself. He shouldn't teach me anything. He knows nothing. And he tells all the lies like that. How would people listen to him? How would I listen to a liar? Huh? How can I go and study with a monk who lies? I don't know how many other people that he lies about. How many others that he proclaims to be friends with or to know about so that he becomes famous. But I know that about me because he talks about me. All lies. 99.9% except my name, Tanhai. Even he said here, I embraced him and said, I love him. Yeah, I forgive him and I love him. And may God bless him. May the Buddha save his soul because he's so heavy, so sinfully heavy. That's why his aura is so dark. I, I hope he doesn't infect people who go near him because uh, Maya workers have this kind of darkness in them. Sometimes they can manifest a little light just to cheat people. But most people who have their third eye open, have psychic power, they will see his aura very dark. Not quite black, it's just coffee brown, you know, and has holes in it. Yeah, this is one of the worst you can have, except black. He keeps saying he loves me, I don't even know him, but... Thank you for your love, but still, you keep saying you love somebody and keep slandering her, talking about her private life and uh, even her private name and all that. It's not my private name, but still, even if it is, he should not have done that. That is a very, very uh, rude manner, very low kind of character, I have to say. And I'm not saying sorry about it. He earned it. He started it. I never knew him. I don't know why he had to drag me out and smear my name in black and say all kinds of things that are untrue about me. I don't understand it. And if he can read English or Vietnamese, he must know I teach all the right things. I talk about Buddhas also, all kinds of Buddhist sutras, all kinds of Buddhist stories I read to my so-called disciples all these decades. I don't need him to call me anything, Buddha or monk or nun. I don't need his acceptance to do what I do. We each have the freedom to live our lives, just not have the freedom to slander others to slander for nothing, for no reason. That is in the physical, in national laws, also forbidden not to talk about being a monk, having 250 precepts. People call you Sufu, meaning master and father. And you talk like that, huh? About some innocent little girl, huh? Even if she's not a nun, She's a little girl, harmless, innocent. And you talk like that? Huh? You slander her, degrade her, call her names and drag her private name out or anything at all. For what? What has she done to you or anybody on this whole planet? Nothing. She only helps people financially, spiritually, uh, physically, whatever she can. Monks like you, if you're really a monk, are a shame to our country, Vietnam. It's a shame to the international reputation of our country to produce such a so-called monk like you. So you should check yourself first before you slander anyone else. So now you know many lies, many liars in this world, some lying for the worst cause, leading people downfall to hell. This is the worst lie you can make. And these men, oh God, Trang Taman Hui, we will rescue both of them many times, two times at least that some witnesses saw, other times nobody saw. 
because nobody was with me. But, you know, more than two times already. And they still did not repent because rescue in, in the astral world is different than in the physical world. Rescue in the physical world is easy. Everybody can see maybe you're wounded or you're dead. People uh, uh, treat you and make you alive again. It's different from the astral body. You have to go to the astral world to see it. And the physical body of that astral being still doesn't even know that he's been punished in hell. That is the thing. But he will die soon. Such people don't live long. They will die and then they will know it. They might be physically sick and all that, but they will not understand that it has something to do with the astral punishment in hell. That is the thing. That's why many humans don't know anything about what they did wrong. And that they are already being punished and jailed or burning in hell already until they left the physical body. Then they will know. Then it will be too late. So I'm warning all of you, humanity, please, hell exists. And even if you're still alive physically, your astral body is already in hell, just waiting for you to relinquish the body. Then you will know everything. You will see everything. It's the body that obstructs you from seeing the bad worlds and also the good heavens. That's why humans live so ignorantly. What a pity. Please, wake up. Please, please, trust me. I gain nothing from telling you all the truth. Please wake up. Repent. Be vegan. Keep peace. Do good deeds. Find a master if you want to go home. Find a living, enlightened, worthy master. Don't just listen to their talk. See their eyes. See what they do. And judge them correctly before you commit your heart to them. Okay, huh? Yeah? You don't have to believe in me. Don't follow me. Just follow your heart. Go find a master and take refuge in him or her. Or find a monk and recite the Amitabha Buddha's name with him. Because if that monk is holy, sincere in his practice, then he will lend some of his energy to you. If you're good to him, he will protect you. He will take you up high. It might not be above the third level yet, but at least you have a chance to meet some more masters up there in the higher heaven, and then you can learn more instead of going to hell or going back to the turbulent physical world, which will confuse you, degrade you, blind you into all kinds of detrimental activities and situations that you will forget God, you will forget the Buddha, forget yourself. That is a problem. So please go find a master or find a monk, any monk who is truly sincere and believes in the Buddhas. Don't listen to the monks who say that Amitabha land doesn't exist. You know, Shakyamuni Buddha told that story, told the queen in prison about Amitabha Buddha land in detail. Shakyamuni Buddha cannot lie. What for anybody lies about that? So we're lucky to still have that Amitabha Buddha Sutra. Find it, print it, read it, buy it, borrow it, copy it, do whatever you can. Recite Amitabha Buddha's name day and night. If you can't do anything else, if you don't have time for anything else, Amitabha Buddha, Kwan Yin Bodhisattva, your refuge. Please, I tell you with all my heart, I just want to save you. And because you don't trust me, I tell you many other things just for you. You don't have to believe in me. You don't have to follow me. Just do something. Otherwise... We don't have a lot of time anymore to argue uh, who is good, who is not. Just take care of yourself. Pray to God. Pray to the Buddhas that you, you trust. There are many Buddhas in the world. It's just Amitabha Buddha. It's the easiest one for you to approach. Okay? <laughs> because of his mercy vow, to save you if you call on him. So make it a habit. Call on him so you will remember him. The moment you leave this fake world, he will bring you back to your true home. And do not go follow whichever monk. 
Oh. It's even famous or a long time monk already or has many nuns and monks following him. If he doesn't believe in Amitabha Buddha and if he says that hell doesn't exist like uh, that, uh, Tanyata. then he is Maya. He's working for the negative force. He's no good for you. Please. Go follow any master who believes in the Buddhas, who truly believes Amitabha Buddha land exists. I guarantee you, it does exist. I know that land. Even many of my disciples know that land. We can come and go there. Please believe it. Please believe in Amitabha Buddha the way Sakamuni Buddha tells you. You must believe him. And hell does exist, not like who say hell doesn't exist and was not mentioned until 500 years after the Buddha. No, since the Buddha's time already, the Buddha say that. And long, long, long before that, in uh, Kristikapa Sutra also, you know, Dia Tam Vương, Kân Dia Tam Vương Bồ Tát, all the hells are clearly detailed, explained in that sutra. You read all that, and nowadays in Ikuan Tao or in other religious uh, beliefs, they go to hell also, visit hell to come back and write things about hell. And they also go to heaven, visit heaven and come back and write books, books about hell, books about heaven. You can obtain anywhere from real transmitters of hell and heaven from the Qigong Buddha, Te Kong, Phật Song Te Kong, the living Buddha Qigong. He went to hell and to heaven to come back and help the transmitter to write all that down for you. Please do research. Hell does exist. I swear to all the Buddhas and Almighty God that I tell you the truth. Don't wait until you go there to verify it and tell me that I'm right. I don't want that. Please, hell is horrible. It's endless suffering. Please, please, aim for heaven. And for Buddha's land, yeah? Some people might think that Satnyata doesn't advise anything bad to people, like go stealing or killing or doing anything bad. To say that there's no Amitabha Buddha's land and no hell, that is the worst thing already. Worse than any crime he can commit to the faithful. Because to break people's faith like that makes them vulnerable to the negative attack because they will be empty. They will have nowhere to run to. They will have nowhere to lean on. And if people believe that there's no hell, then they will go do any bad things to the government's system, to society, to the people, to their neighbors, to their family, because they believe there's no hell. If they believe in Thetnyata, they will do anything bad. Nobody has to tell them to do bad. They will do it. So that is the worst crime you can commit when you deny the Buddha's land and deny hell. So I'm telling you, stay away from these kind of people.